Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader .com. Uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, tuning in, uh, deciding to spend uh, a couple of minutes with us. And hopefully, again, like I say every single night, we can give you uh, a pretty good sense of common sense and unbiased uh, thought process for uh, the next day. Only thing we ask is if you can take one second uh, before watching the video. Uh, just simply click a like. It'll help the channel. It'll help us grow. It'll help us uh, get the word out, right, on unbiased uh, technical analysis. So here's kind of like the good, bad, and the ugly part of the day, okay? Uh, if you look at the final scoreboard, the Dow down uh, 500, excuse me, 400 points, the S&P 500 down 38 points, and the NASDAQ down 156 points. That's, you know, usually on the surface, they go, oh, it's, you know, that's pretty bad. It's not awful, but it's pretty bad. Um, the problem with that was kind of the game plan that I had coming into today's session just all got blown out of the water. Okay. Literally all blown out of the water. We'll get to that in a second. The biggest issue what happened today on the macro scale of the market is it got below the 20 day moving average. And right from the word go, instead of losing kind of a gap and crap scenario, it was almost like a gap, throw the baby out with the bathwater, considering there was really no decisive technical damage. And we rallied literally into uh, the close, which is very, very odd. But this was kind of the scenario, right? We had a big gap down and all we did was literally rally into the close. And that sounds great on the surface. The problem is, the bulls still closed below the 20 day moving average. And now pretty much every stock for the occasion, for the exception of one or two, and I'll give you guys uh, those symbols in a second, everything now is stuck in the middle of their channels. So I'll give you a perfect example, right? NVIDIA, right? Today's high on NVIDIA is 901. Today's low on NVIDIA, 876. The stock closed uh, in, the four, in the 890s. So we're $8 away from the highs, $14 away from the lows. That's not exactly what you want to see. A stock, for example, like Amazon, right? Amazon did a great job today. It gapped down, reclaimed both levels, but it's still far, well, not far away, but it's still away from the previous channel. So you're, if you go through the NASDAQ 100, again, I, I use NASDAQ 100 as a proxy uh, to kind of what I trade, because again, the majority of the stocks that I trade are in uh, the NASDAQ 100. So we are kind of left in a scenario that going into tomorrow's session, you're going to see a lot of names really stuck in channels. And that's a very, very bad thing. The good news is for the bulls, if you look at how the queues performed the last three times that we got below the 20 day moving average, and usually that's a, it's a bearish thing. But since the market has been such an incredible, aggressive, rabid animal in 2024, it feels like every single time we get below the 20 day moving average, the market starts rallying the next days and reclaimed it. So here is the last couple of times, right? So here is the last couple of times we, we lost the 20 day and what happened next? Okay, this was on February 21st. We got below the 20 day moving average, we reclaimed it on the close and had a massive gap up the next day, right? One plus one equals six. Here's another scenario, right? Here's another scenario that we close below the, the 20 day moving average on 319. Guess what happened the next day? We exploded for the next two days. Again, one plus one equals six. So here we are again. Okay, here we are present day. Another hammer, right? There was a hammer here on the 22nd of February. There was a hammer here on the 19th of March. And now we are in a hammer here on April the 2nd. Is it possible we rally tomorrow based on what we just talked about in the last minute or so? Yeah, it's all possible. Uh, again, this is everything away from common sense from technical analysis, but this market has been so strong that for some reason, losing a major moving average is a buy signal. Don't ask me why, I just work here. 
So going into tomorrow, yeah, I would usually turn around and be like, well, we're underneath the 20-day moving average. We should be 100% sell buys going into tomorrow. But based on kind of what we just talked about in the last three scenarios, don't we have to be prepared for the long side? And here's a couple of stocks that I do like tomorrow for the long side. Meta today kind of bucked the trend. As a matter of fact, if you look at Meta, you know, it had a, an, an insane move today. It's had an absolutely insane move today into back the supply. And you can see it on Meta right now after hours is getting rejected on the supply. The point is, if Meta could get back into supply and the market does, for some reason, answer to the bell that one plus one equals seven again, there could be another, you know, there could be a nice spike tomorrow if the market holds up. I also like Google. Remember we talked about Google last night, right? That Google, any weakness, uh, any weakness today should be bought into rising 60 minutes, uh, 60 minutes support. Well, Google today put it in an inside day, which is super duper bullish after a day that the stock broke out yesterday. And this, this move today, only down 89 cents, was nearly on about a half a volume bar that it did on yesterday. And again, this is a perfect example. We talked about the stock held the 60 minute support here and rallied. So the question is going to today, well, Dan, this must have been a great thing, right? You're, the stocks that you were talking about yesterday, NVIDIA to the downside, Tesla to the downside, you have your bounce plays. This must have been awesome, correct? Let me explain. So this was last night's, this was last night's focus list for today, right? So NVIDIA yesterday, we had a two-sided pivot. 922 to the upside, 891 to the downside. So what's the problem, right? What's the problem? What's the major catastrophe here, right? The video went down to 876, correct? Yeah, it did. The problem was it went from 891, okay? It literally went from 891, literally 891 to about 876 in the, in the, in the last 10 minutes before the opening bell. I literally watched it go down 16, 17 points without me. So that sucked, correct? That sucked. So I said, all right, no problem. Tesla's coming out with earning. Uh, Tesla's coming out with delivery numbers. Okay, here is our pivot. We had 179.58 to the upside, 170 to the downside. Surely we're going to catch Tesla, right? Okay, so Tesla comes out with their, with their numbers. Horrific numbers. I think Wedbush said it's one of the worst potential outcomes that they've they've seen for the for the estimates the stock goes literally from 170 to 163 in a matter of three minutes literally four five ten minutes before the opening bell didn't have a chance to trade it google never got there reddit you know reddit uh reddit went down to 44 never gave a second entry lula went down about seven eight points same thing as nvidia and tesla so the problem was we had a great great game plan and the problem was everything went pre-market. Now, before somebody turns around and says, well, Dan, why don't you just trade them pre-market? Pre-market liquidity and regular hours liquidity are the difference between a hand grenade and a ham sandwich. The two different scenarios, right? It's the two different scenarios because all it takes is one buyer to come in on a pre-market base. And they're going to excuse you three, four points. So you also have opening imbalances right before the open. And if you get unlucky, you can lose three, four dollars in a matter of seconds. So that's why I really don't trade pre-market a lot of these names, because, again, the severity of what could happen could be a lot better with the final outcome. So I literally missed the whole day to make to make the, the, the day even wrong, to put more salt on the wound is all the dips that we were watching. Right. I was watching it, uh, uh, I was watching Google on that 152 remount. Guess what? It happened 10 minutes before the open and the stock decided to go up $3. So I missed that. I missed the remount on the video. Get it? You know why? Because it happened right at the open as well. So great game plan. Nothing, you know, nothing to show for it. Uh, I even took a stupid pivot on Tesla. I kind of forced the pivot a little bit. But I knew support was there. Lost about a dollar. Not really a big deal in it near. But this show is one of those scenarios that Sometimes you can have the greatest game plan in the world. You're super duper prepared. Everything is good, all good in the world. And you get bupkis. You get absolutely nothing. But you know what? When you take a step back, you realize, you know what? Life is fair. Trading is not fair. You could sit there and cry and moan and complain. 
nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. The same way the market gives you super value and you get pivot after pivot after pivot and you can walk on water and everything feels great. You're also going to have a day that your game plan goes into a house of flames. You get nothing accomplished. Hey, hey, but you get to talk about the day after four o'clock. Welcome to my world. So it sucks. It is what it is. The worst part about today's session was now that we've closed for the day, like I said in the start, we're at the, we're at the mercy of the markets tomorrow. So now we have to pick a direction tomorrow because we are all in the middle of the channels. We have to put ourselves in a situation that the, either the bottom of the range needs to be attacked again or the top of the range. Because if not, we're going to have a very, very tough time tomorrow if the majority of stocks are in the middle of the ranges. The only good thing about that is you don't need 100 trades of the day. If we could get, for example, Google to wake up and start testing yesterday's channels, would be great. If we can get Meta to wake up and reclaim back this whole channel here and reclaim back the 10-day moving average, would be wonderful. On the flip side, to the downside, look at Apple, right? Apple is now a, a, a stone throws away from the March lows. If Apple could finally violate the March lows, yeah, the damn thing could, could go lower. So we're definitely watching that uh, as well. Tesla, your guess is as good as mine. This is, and again, I, I want to I want to kind of read, I kind of want to read to you guys what Wedbush actually said about this, uh, about this, um, this last delivery numbers. It was pretty, it was pretty, you know, crazy, but yet the stock uh, kind of rebounded $4 off the lows. So you had Cowan cutting its price target to 160. That really wasn't a big deal. Where, where was it that I'm seeing here? Uh, uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? I can't find it now. Of course, when you find, when you need something, you can't find it. But moral of the story is, I think, here it is, here it is, here it is. Is this one of this? So, yeah. So here's, here's what, here's what Wedbush, here's what Wedbush said. This first quarter delivery is an unmitigated disaster. Do I even need, even need to, to, to even talk about it more? It was a disaster, but yet the stock rallied, the stock literally rallied right off the i keep it, 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 for some reason e signal has these these fake wicks and destroys everything we talked about so literally from not from right from the word go the stock just basically rallied off the open and just went sideways for the rest of the day so this is one of those days guys years ago you know 20 22 23 years ago i would have been sitting there complaining and moaning and oh i can't believe it it would i would have taken it personally and it would have drained my mental capacity you know what it sucks it's over. Get on with your life, right? Get on with your life. Tomorrow should be hopefully a better and seamless day. But hey, the most important part is we are prepared. We're going to continue to be prepared every single day. Majority of times your game plan will get confirmed. Sometimes, you know, the market has a very sick sense of humor. Sometimes it'll go up in flames and you get a big nothing in your uh, Easter basket and you will like it. And that's it, guys. So tomorrow, I am watching, potentially, uh, if Tesla starts testing the bottom of the channel here, let's see if, if they can possibly have gotten rid of the buyer that they were trying to fight with all day today. I am definitely watching for tomorrow. Uh, Google, if the market continues to be strong, I'm watching Meta tomorrow. If the market continues to be strong, I am watching Apple tomorrow. If it loses the bottom of the range here, let me see what else I like for tomorrow. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Amazon looks okay. Uh, Amazon looks okay. Looks a lot better than the other names. Still needs to get above uh, the channel from a couple of days ago. But overall, guys, the, the theme going into tomorrow, guys, is patience. Okay, it's patience. Since we are in the middle of the ranges, we're going to need a very, very clear sign of what happens next right that's a very very uh important message tomorrow we, we didn't close at the bottom we didn't close at the top we closed in the middle so literally you can flip a coin and see what happens tomorrow but again do not anticipate folks if you anticipate you i promise you you are completely disadvantaged i always uh tell the webinar every single day we are looking at a reward to risk ratio when your game plan gets blown up it gets flipped around now you're looking at a risk to reward ratio. That's not the way you want to trade. You want to trade from a position of strength, not a position of weakness. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hope everybody's doing well. 
short memory, whether you won, lost, or indifferent today, short memory, life is over, right? <laughs> life, excuse me, life is not over. The past is the past. We don't live there anymore. On to greater things for tomorrow. Guys, God bless, and I will see you on the video tomorrow. Take care.